Hey everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, your source of animal rights news and gossip all packed into a short, sweet three minutes and everyone's favorite day, a Thursday. Obviously, it's a great Thursday, what can I say? Um, as always, hit the subscribe button, turn on that little bell notification, and follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter because it's an amazing adventure we're all going on and we're going on it together. Every week you can always see that certain day's calendar behind my... my... Okay, well, not, not this week, but a certain day's calendar is up there uh, every week, um, and you can now pre-order yours for 2021 at the link below. Every proceed from the calendar goes directly to supporting political prisoners. It's a fantastic calendar, um, artwork done by political prisoners, historical and revolutionary dates throughout the whole thing, and we are all gonna need a great calendar to count down every single beautiful, happy, positive, magnificent day we're gonna be having through all of 2021. There's no doubt about that. Okay, I don't know about you, but if you've lived in the United States for the past four years, I'm pretty sure you're tired of winning. We're gonna win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Okay, and even in the animal rights movement, we are also pretty tired of winning at this point. Um, so today I'm gonna dedicate uh, this episode to nothing but positive wins. No, no, for real. F Freddie, put on the positive thing about the, yeah. See? All right, let's go to France first. France has declared that they will be banning uh, fur farms throughout the country. The government is giving fur farms five years to shut down and close up shop and get out of town. This is in part due to undercover investigations that people shot on uh, one of the farms that of course shocked and outraged everyone and was used as an important tactic to then push um, things like these bans. Also beyond like a, being a critical tactic in this campaign, undercover investigations are really important to, to build that siege mentality that we need when we do our campaign work. So the largest fur farmer in France, he was quoted as saying that he felt that they are constantly observed and constantly spied upon. So that is siege mentality, right? And that's an important thing because it keeps your target reminded that we are watching at all times, we are fighting at all times, and that the movement will wear you down. And that's what it does. It's kind of like a psychological warfare on our targets. And I think uh, it's an important thing to think about as we organize. How do we stay in their minds at all times? Speaking of fur farms, let's move over to Poland, where Poland also says if legal hurdles are cleared next month, that, uh, and all reports are indicating that that will be likely, that they too will be banning fur farms across the country. And why? Also because of undercover investigations. These undercover investigations show that the animals on the farms were engaging in cannibalism due to the awful, terrible conditions that they're forced to live in. So I think this is an important note that, um, you know, while we do these undercover investigations, while we do daylight raids, while we are often inside of farms filming, whether that's legally or illegally or part of a demonstration or an undercover, you know, clandestine thing, we have to remember that when we use those videos and put them out to the public, that we shouldn't just simply be saying like, people can stop all what you're seeing by just going vegan. Like that should not be the end goal. That should not be the, the, the strategy. That should not be the big ask. It's a nice accompanying piece. It's a nice accompanying ask to think about veganism, to go vegan. But these undercover investigations, these filmings, these raids, they need to be used as a tactic and a broader strategy as part of a pressure campaign because this is what can happen. We need to stop trying to talk our way into animal liberation. I know I say this all the time, including the last episode, and, and I say this a lot, but, but every time we see a victory in our movement, whenever we see a step forward, whenever we see anything like that, it is almost 100% because of pressure campaigns. It wasn't because enough people in our communities and enough people in society saw these terrible things and threw up our hands and said, all right, enough is enough. This needs to end. That education, that outreach, again, is an important critical tactic, but it's one tactic that needs to be enveloped uh, by a broader strategy of a pressure campaign. And these pressure campaigns is how we start seeing these victories that we are talking about. All right, let's get back into it. Let's travel around the world to another amazing victory, this time in Fran France. We were just in France. All right, apparently it's in France again. Can anyone else get a win in here edgewise? So the environmental minister, Barbara Pompili, announced these sweeping measures by saying like, our attitude to wild animals has changed, which I think is a good thing. So they've implemented, so they are implementing a ban on wild animals used in uh, circuses 
and an end to the breeding of dolphins and orcas in captivity. Also, no new dolphinariums will be built in France ever again. And France is also looking into building a sanctuary for the dolphins and orcas that are still stuck in captivity in the country. So the question on everyone's minds, and by everyone I, I of course mean Roger Yates, is will there be a bailout package? So for the fur farms, as far as I can tell and what I've read, I haven't seen any indication that there would be. In terms of the circuses and the aquariums, the government of France is going to be offering up an 8 million US dollar relief package that will move the circuses and aquariums and transition them out of the captivity of these wild animals. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is there somewhere in between? Um, I always find these debates interesting and Roger Yates always has good ones. So check out his YouTube channel as I'm sure they'll pop up there at some point. So, so can the U.S. get some love in here or what? Um, so Nordstrom stores, which is like a higher end uh, department store chain, you know, around the United States, they have um, pledged to go fur free by the end of 21. Also a win in my book, but not just fur free. They're banning like the sale of exotic skins as well which means no lizards, no snakes, no pythons, no crocodiles, no alligators, no ostriches, no sharks, no kangaroos, and no stingrays. Stingrays? Like wearing the skin of any animal I think is awful and cruel and terrible, but are there people out there that are like, <laughs> I need to get that new stingray jacket. Like who's wearing stingrays? I don't know. So we often talk about how it's animal liberation or nothing and that these small steps and these small wins are just baby steps and baby steps aren't acceptable. If anyone's followed my channel, you are aware that I disagree with that sentiment, that it's impossible to go from point A to point Z with nothing in between. But I think these are great little steps from point A to point Z, and I'm happy that we are able to take them. And I'm sure that animals are happy as well to not have to be on fur farms or live in captivity in aquariums or uh, circuses. And so I welcome them because I think it's important that we recognize that the unfortunate reality is we have to take steps towards our end goals. And I think we get to determine what those steps look like. We often think steps look like welfareism and bigger cages and enrichment toys. But no, and I say this a lot again, and I apologize, is that we get to determine what those steps look like. And in this case, these small steps are no more fur farms in France, no more fur farms in Poland, no more dolphins in captivity, no more orcas in captivity, no more fur or, or exotic skins sold in stores like Nordstrom's. And these start piling up and piling up to build a bigger and more compassionate community uh, and society for everyone. So with that being said, I welcome these steps forward. I'm excited to see them coming. I'm excited to see pressure campaigns being implemented to make these steps happen and bring us closer to our end goal of animal liberation. So as we continue to win, um, and in order to win, we need to also keep fighting.